that you're here. We know we've got some family and friends who are with us to remember the saints. I want to issue a special welcome to you. I will give some very specific instruction a little bit later in the service about the lighting of the candles. Um, and I will also remind us of some things about the communion service and so forth, just so folks are feeling invited and welcome and you've got the details, so to speak. Uh, we are wearing masks and uh, doing our best at social distancing, so we ask that you uh, practice that with the mask over both uh, mouth and nose. It's a tough time, and I know that this week we've had at least one business that has struggled with uh, some illness and had to shut down for a little while and some other folks. So um, as we remember and pray for folks, let's also do our best to fight this disease together. I want to make mention of a word that is in the scripture. Kathy will read, and it may be a word that's very unfamiliar, and it does come up later in the time of preaching, and that's a word called phylacteries. It's an odd uh, word that, that we may not know. It's a reference to the way uh, many of the most devout people of faith in ancient times of the Jewish faith would often meditate on scripture. And the phylacteries were actually uh, strips of leather that would sort of be wound around the arm and so forth and tied to a, a piece of a hide or something that had scripture tied on it. It was in essence wearing the word of God. It was uh, a thing to remind people to read, to pray, and it became also a practice that for some people became showy. Uh, so when you hear that word, you'll know uh, what is being referenced there. For communion today, since the pandemic, of course, uh, we've gone to ways that we hope will be safer to receive the sacrament. And you have hopefully been able to uh, get one of the little plastic packets with an en envelope, with a napkin, and with the little cup. This little cup, and I'm saying this specifically so folks who are joining us for the first time will feel comfortable with this. That little cup, it, that looks, it looks like a coffee creamer, doesn't it, <laughs> in some respects. Uh, this has two, two seals on the top. The first seal, when you pull it back, has a little wafer, and the second seal then gets you to the compartment with the juice. And these are notoriously uh, tricky. They can be a little bit hard to open without spilling a drop or two. Don't panic about that. We share the napkin just for convenience. And we will open those later during uh, the time when I'm leading us in the liturgy or the prayers. Everyone is invited to participate in Holy Communion here. Our founder, John Wesley, uh, made a point, a hallmark of his ministry was to make communion available because he believed that for anyone, variety of denominations and backgrounds, people who had not been a part of a church family, that may be a unique and powerful moment where God speaks to that person. And so we want you to feel especially welcome wherever you're from and whatever you bring with you today. Action ministry, this is area churches or area Christians together in one network. The building on uh, Main Street in Dwajak, where the food pantry is located has been busy and I want to share my appreciation for First United Methodist Church folk who provide um, so much of the support and feed on the ground. Action was one of the uh, area ministry groups that sponsored the Feeding America truck last week. The truck uh, over at the First Christian Church served 101 families and over 300 people. And uh, cars were lined up 
uh, down the street and down Telegraph and so forth, um, testifying to just what a tough time it is and how much folks are in need. And Karen Benedicts could not be here today, but she asked me to share that next Thursday, the 5th, the Feeding America truck will be at the Seventh-day Adventist Church on Hill Street. And she needs some help with boxes and putting, you know, the carts together for folks. About 3 o'clock Thursday afternoon at the Seventh-day Adventist Church on Hill Street for the next Feeding America truck. If you can help, please call Karen Benedicts. If you don't know her number, we'll get it for you. The annual charge conference, our annual congregational meeting takes place this Thursday in the evening. Usually we have all of the materials prepared ahead and then folks can come and participate. We're sorry to say that we can't do it quite that way this year. The district superintendent, the leader from Kalamazoo who is in charge of that meeting has called a Zoom conference with the administrative council, essentially. And uh, so that meeting will take place online. That means not everyone will be able to participate in it, and we want to be as open as we can be. Becky Peters has hustled this week, has put together the advanced packets of information, and I need to double check. Where are the packs? At the end of the service, okay, she's hustling right now with some communion materials. She'll have stapled packets that have some documents. Some of them are reports, information only. In other words, just updates to keep us in the loop. There are a couple of action items in there, and we want to make sure that folks have a chance to pick those packs up today and then flip through them. If you have questions, we're asking that you call either, well, one of three folks, I guess, Frank Butts, and Frank, if you can wave, we've, we'll have Frank's phone number in the pack, and then Barb Groner, Barb's number is in the pack, I believe, and then Kathy Hall, our lay leader, Kathy's number. That way, if you look things over and you've got a question, call one of these folks before Thursday so we're open and communicating. Okay. Finally, I will mention that uh, we have beautiful uh, rendition of For All the Saints that we will be hearing but not able to sing in a little bit. And so I'm going to read a few verses. For all the saints who from their labors rest, who thee by faith before the world confessed. Thy name, O Jesus, be forever blessed. Alleluia. And if you'll allow me my favorite verse. And when the strife is fierce, the warfare long, steals on the ear the distant triumph song. And hearts are brave again and arms are strong. Alleluia. Whew, help's coming. And the verse that may be most pertinent for us today, O blessed communion, fellowship divine, we feebly struggle, they in glory shine. Yet all are one in thee, for all are thine. Communion. When we get to the table today, we commune with the living Christ who is really with us. And in a manner of speaking, through the mystery of faith, we are also in communion with those who have gone into the kingdom before us. I invite you to share the wave of Christ, I guess, the peace of Christ through a wave. And uh, let's make sure that we share a word with folks who are worshiping from home. The camera back that way and one over uh, Mr. Rumley here. So folks at home can be a part of things. 
and I'll turn things over to Kathy. Good morning. Please stand as you're able for the call to worship. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Please be seated for the opening hymn for all the saints. Please join me in prayer. We bless your holy name, O God, for all your servants who, having finished their course, now rest from their labors. Give us grace to follow the example of their steadfastness and faithfulness to your honor and glory. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Our first reading today comes from Psalm 107, verses 1 through 7. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, those he redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south, some wandered in desert wastes, finding no way to an inhabited town. Hungry and thirsty, their souls fainted within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way until they reached an inhabited town. Please stand as able for the reading of the gospel, which is taken from Matthew 23, verses 1 through 12. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The scribes and Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. Therefore, do whatever they teach you and follow it, but do not do as they do for they do not practice what they preach. 
They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on the shoulders of others, but they themselves are unwilling to lift a finger to move them. They do all their deeds to be seen by others, for they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long. They love to have the place of honor at banquets and the best seats in the synagogues and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have other people call them rabbi. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher and you are all students. And call no one your father on earth, for you have one father, the one in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant. All who exalt themselves will be humbled, and all those who humble themselves will be exalted. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. I invite you to pray with me. Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. A couple of Saturdays ago, Liz and I got up early on the morning, beautiful crisp fall day, and we drove up to Macosta County, Michigan. That's near Big Rapids, out in a, a relatively wooded area. We went up there to visit my father-in-law, Buck Taylor. Buck Taylor is Kim's father. And I got to know Buck and Yvonne when I was a pastor in that area several years ago. Kim and I were married, and it became my second home. Liz had not had the opportunity to meet Buck, and he wanted to meet her, and she wanted to meet him. And so as a moment of respect for both of them, we made a day of it, and we had a good time. When we arrived, I need to tell you something about Buck. His name is Gordon, but nobody knows that. If you say, Where'd Gordon, where's Gordon Taylor's house? Nobody could tell you, but if you say, where's Buck live? Everybody knows. He's a legendary character out that way with more deer blinds than I can count. And his uh, hunting and fishing prowess is very evident when you walk into the house because of his prominently displayed taxidermy. Buck's a good guy, salt of the earth, common sense, and a caring brother. We started to reminisce, at least Buck and I did, as we were sharing some things with Liz about old family gatherings and uh, reunions and picnics and graduations for uh, the nieces and nephews of mine, my son, his grandchildren, and we landed in a little bit of a conversation about one of those high school graduations on a steaming hot June day inside a big civic center arena that didn't have adequate air conditioning. Have you ever gone to one of those? This was one of those where the ceremony lasted almost three hours. Speech after speech after speech. And the keynote address was by a local judge in that particular community. And it was evident that this fellow loved to hear himself speak. And he recited accomplishment after accomplishment after accomplishment in his life as an intended inspiration for the young folks who are graduating. Buck mentioned that in his own language. 
And then he said to me and to Liz, you know, after that ceremony, they had to take that fellow to the hospital. Liz and I looked at each other like, what, what do you mean? He said he hurt his arm patting himself on the back so much. That's Buck. Kathy read for us from Jesus' teaching, Matthew 23. It's one of the last real teaching moments of Jesus before the arrest, the trial, the crucifixion, and the resurrection. Jesus is telling folks how it is best to live. Make no mistake, Jesus had no problem telling folks how they should live. And he had an interesting way of doing it because sometimes in a very, very sort of hot fashion, he would say, you know, this way of doing life, don't be like that. <laughs> and he pointed to the scribes and the Pharisees. And he talked about the ways in which the scribes and the Pharisees represented themselves as, as heroes of the culture, as defenders of the faith, as the people, you know, that were to be admired, as the great exemplar. As Buck would say, the folks who are hurting their arms. <laughs> and Jesus had basically three critiques for these scribes and Pharisees. First of all, number one, they said a lot, but they didn't do a lot. They were experts at a lot of things, but they didn't lift their fingers to get the work of God done. You know that saying that is a little different perhaps than that dynamic, do as I say, not as I do? We hear that and we rightfully think of that as perhaps an indictment for folks who, well, are hypocrites. Jesus, in essence, says, yeah, do as they say. Just don't do as they do. Because these folks will not do and follow through the way they should. Secondly, Jesus critiqued the scribes and Pharisees because in their self-anointed expertise, they laid a lot of burdens on folks, right? You got to keep this rule. You got to keep that rule or I'm going to, you know, this and that and God will get you. So they didn't do the things that God would have them do to love and serve others. But they were experts about all of the minute rules others should keep. What a combination. And finally, they acted for the wrong reasons. You see? They wore their faith bling to demonstrate what great followers of God they were. And any of the good that they did manage to do, almost in spite of themselves, seemed to happen when there was an audience around, right? You know? The photo op kind of faith. Whoa! You can understand why Jesus said, well, maybe do as they say when they say things that are legitimate, of faith, earnest, authentic. Don't do as they do. The scribes and the Pharisees would have been taken to the hospital multiple times for sore and broken arms, patting themselves on the back. On All Saints Day, I simply wish to leave you a description of true saints. True saints are not rock stars, as we say. 
They're not heroes with the Klieg lights and the cameras rolling. They're not the people who stand up and stand out when others can see them do things that are considered admirable. The saints are those who simply trusted Christ and served God and served others. And you know they're not going to land on the evening news for that. And it's okay. We're going to remember some folks in a little bit who did things from quiet faith through their own personalities, their own mixture of, of wonderful attributes and maybe a flaw or two here and there like the rest of us. People who were not the scribes and Pharisees, but people who loved Jesus and served others and left a powerful legacy. Recently, I read the story of a woman named Margaret Southern. Mrs. Southern died when she was 94 years old in 2012, I believe, in Greenville, South Carolina. She was a very modest woman. She was, had been an elementary school teacher. Her husband passed in 1983, and so she was alone for a while. Lived in a small home, and up until the time when she decided uh, she probably shouldn't drive, she was driving an older model car from the 1980s. She lived very frugally. Didn't need a lot, didn't say a lot, loved people, especially children, and her little dog, Molly. When Margaret Southern died, they discovered that she had left $8.4 million to a community foundation for children and for dogs and cats. <laughs> I probably will never meet someone who can do that. I won't, Liz and I won't probably be able to do anything like that. And the number is not the reason why I share her story. 8.4 million. Margaret Southern was and is a saint because she did the deeds when scribes and Pharisees would not. From all accounts, she didn't lay heavy burdens on other folks. And she acted for the right reasons, quietly and lovingly. It really doesn't matter if we leave that kind of money to people all I'm saying is, the true saints leave a lot in kindness, in love, in a string of small deeds. And that's what it means to be a saint. Amen? As we move to a time of the pastoral prayer, uh, I'll remind you that though I'm certainly capable of forgetting important things, I'm not forgetting the Lord's Prayer at this moment. We will uh, share in the Lord's Prayer during our communion liturgy. I'd like to... Whoop, making sure I have my notes with me for some prayer concerns so we don't forget, folks. Gloria Staten has mentioned um, Tracy, it's Molesky, right? Who works at one of the local schools, had some surgery this week, was, was hoping to return by home by the end of the week and has had a little bit of complications still in the hospital. So we want to remember her. And then a friend of the Staten family, 
uh, an MSU, Michigan State uh, senior, has been diagnosed with frontal lobe brain tumor. So a young person, I presume, who is pretty ill, want to keep this person unnamed uh, in our hearts and prayers. I've shared on the church Facebook page, some of you saw this, Pastor K. Uh, Lydelt, who was a United Methodist pastor in the Michigan Conference, died this week from COVID-19, the coronavirus. Pastor K. became ill, was quite seriously ill, and then for a few days looked to be improving and yet then passed suddenly near the middle part of the week. I believe, no, she is not. I was going to say I believe she's the first Michigan United Methodist pastor to die of the coronavirus. She's not. Uh, I had a few older retired friend pastors who have also passed away. And lastly, let me mention the nation. This is a time of division and ferment and perhaps meanness, <laughs> depending on how you describe that. And let us pray for the nation that we can remain principled from our different perspectives and calm and most of all, loving. I'm sorry if that sounded like a sermon. It's, it's my prayer, I suppose, that we can do that. Let us pray. Holy God, move in our hearts that as we remember your saints, we may appreciate those qualities that make for a saint. Give us grace to be gracious with one another, to be principled, to be calm, to be centered, and to be concerned for others. Be with those who have been named and those we now name silently in our hearts. We ask all of this in Jesus' name, amen. Now is the time to return some of what we have been given. The ushers will bring the offering forward during the doxology, but first we'll listen to Scott.
almighty and most merciful God, from you comes every good and perfect gift. Give us hearts to love and serve you. Enable us to show our thankfulness for all your goodness and mercy by giving up ourselves to your service and cheerfully submitting in all things to your blessed will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. You may be seated. Uh, the pandemic will be celebrating the naming of the saints a bit differently this year. A lot of folks have worked very hard knowing how important this moment is um, to make sure that we're doing it in ways where we're not handling things multiples of times and so forth. It's been a while since that has happened which I understand is just a little computer glitch that, hap that comes from nowhere. Well, I'll leave it go. <laughs> what I will do first is light this candle so that that will be available to folks who are lighting the smaller votive candles. And I'm taking A skinny candle that serves as a kind of lighter or taper. We have a number of them on the table. When your loved one, friend, family member is being honored, if you could move forward and take one of these from the table, light it from this, and then move to light a votive candle then extinguish it in this cup and just leave it. I think that will be the best way. This is just a plain cup of water. So when you've lit your votive, put that right in the water and then move over to the table and receive a rose in memory and honor of your loved one. Now, when your loved one is being honored, even if you're not moving forward to light the candle, you're invited to stand in honor of that person. You be the judge of how you do that. But if you're not coming forward to light the candle, but this is a friend, a loved one, feel free to stand. Did I touch on everything that we need to... Finally, I'll let you know that I will be lighting three or, four, or three or four candles for folks this morning because we've heard that their families are either from a great distance out of town or for one reason or another just can't be here. And we certainly want to honor them as well. So I'll accept the privilege of lighting those three or four candles. Ammon Winter, the grandson of Ruth Pickens, was born March 12th, 1993, and he passed away on October 29th, 2019. of First United Methodist Church. She was born December 24th, 1926, and passed on December 22nd, 2019. Velma Delphine Skelly was the mother of Liz Mominy, Kim Klink, Patty Hopkins. She was born 
July 5th, 1933, and passed on January 7th, 2020. The Reverend Stephen Rumley, father to Scott, born September 29th, 1946, passed January 14th, 2020. Nancy Potter is the mother of Patrick and Monica. She was a member of First United Methodist Church. She was born September 15, 1943, and passed January 27, 2020. Irving Frost, Jr., husband to Dorothy, father to Cheryl and Jack, born September 28, 1933, passed February 7, 2020. Phyllis A. Arndt, sister to Jane, was a member of First United Methodist Church. She was born January 1st, 1936, and passed away on May 15th, 2020. Charles Goodrich, husband to Nancy Goodrich, born September 20th, 1936, passed away May 23rd, 2020. Holly Ann Judd was mother to Julie, Robert, and James Judd, was a member of First United Methodist Church, was born May 24th, 1934, and passed away August 25th of 2020. Everett Daniels, husband to Vera and a member of First United Methodist Church. Born August 13th, 1955 and passed September 15th, 2020. 
2020. Hugh Edgar Trussell, husband to Darlene, father to Pam and Steve, was a member of First United Methodist Church. He was born August 16, 1943, and passed away September 27, 2020. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for these lives and the ways in which they enriched our lives and those of so many others. Strengthen them that they may go from faith to faith in your kingdom as we anticipate that reunion in the day of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. They're right here with us, aren't they? Again, each and every person who wishes to participate in the sacrament is welcome. I'll be reading from the United Methodist Hymnal the prayers that go along with the order that I'll be reading will be on the screen so that we can follow together. Some of them are my call, your response, our praying together. I will break the loaf symbolically and raise the cup and then I'll guide us through the receiving first of the bread or the small wafer and then of the juice. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth, and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. 
By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took the bread, he gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. As we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. And by your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let's join together in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from you. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, the gifts of God for all of us, the people of God. The body of Christ given for you. Feed on it and be thankful. blood of Christ given for you. Let us pray. Lord God, for these your mighty gifts we offer thanks. Receive us as well into kingdom fellowship that we may go from strength to strength with all the saints. In Jesus' name, amen.
I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence, or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine I can only imagine When that day comes And I find myself Standing in the sun I can only imagine When all I would do Is forever Forever worship you I can only imagine, yeah. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? forever forever worship you I can only imagine dear saints go now in the knowledge and love of God the creator almighty in the grace of the risen Lord Jesus Christ, and in the fellowship and power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.